This is a stretch cord gilled midge with an air bubble. I'm starting on a number 16 scud emerger hook, putting a glass bead on it, clamping it into the vise. I'm going to be putting a gill on it. You can use either Madeira. I'm going to be using a piece of some fibers off of this macrame cord that I've pulled out. I think this is either polyolefin or polypropylene. It'll have a black tungsten bead for the head. I'm going to be using claret thread. That will determine the color of the body. The first thread that I'm just wrapping up here behind the glass bead is only going to hold that fiber in. It's not going to give, you're not going to see it, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but I do need to have a thread to hold my gills in. So I've just singled out a little strand of that macrame fiber, and I'm going to tie that in behind. that bead. This is going to get squished in there by the bead that I'm going to use for the head and trimmed. I am going to put a whip finish on it right there. I could do a half hitch. A little easier for me to just do a whip finish right there. That's just to hold that thread in place. And I suppose I could put a little bit of glue there, but I don't think it's particularly necessary. So now I need to take my hook out of the vise and add my tungsten bead. So tungsten beads have, are the ones that you buy for flies, have a small hole on one side and a large hole on the other side. I'm going to put the large hole on the hook because I want that to nestle up against that fiber. Normally you would put the small hole first so that it doesn't pull off of the hook over the or crowd the eye. But in this case I want it to push up against that other bead and the gill, so I put the large opening first. Then take my thread. The color of the thread is going to determine the color of the body. I want to just build up a little dam behind that tungsten bead so that it stays put. So the uh, color can be varied. I'm using claret. I think that is one of the colors of midges in nature. Uh, brown, purple, well, I think this claret is better than a purple. Uh, you could use chartreuse. So what I want to do then is cover the hook shank down to where I'm going to build the body and then just uh, sort of taper this a little bit for the body. So what I have for the uh, bulk of the body is this 0.5 millimeter stretch cord. This is available wherever uh, jewelry supplies for home jewelry making are sold. So tie that in and then stretch it as I wind over it down to the bend of the hook. And again, the color of the thread determines the color of the body. So I want a nice even wrap with that. Then I am going to stretch that cord as I wrap it up over the thread and I've got a little bit of a lump that I need to get over at the tail and that's okay if it's 
a little bit of clear down there, I guess. But I want to do touching wraps. So I want my piece of stretch cord to be long enough so that I can hang on to it. And touching wraps up over the body. And you can see how the thread color is showing through. And then I'm going to catch that off. Three wraps over the top, nice tight to hold that in. And then between the bead and now when I trim this tag end off, again, I want to pull it pretty tight and so that when I clip it kind of shrinks back down inside. Then I do a whip finish just to put a knot. I will then give it a haircut, a gill cut maybe. Trim that out, doesn't have to be real even. And I'm going to hold that knot in place with dab of head cement. You could use some UV resin on there, whatever you want to hold that knot in place. So this is a stretch cord, gilled midge with an air bubble.